Hi YouTube, I'm going to show you a trick for, for um, quickness that you can do anywhere. You can do it standing up with your arm out and try and put four quarters. And sometimes you can do six. I can do four because of the um, uh, length of my hand. But I'm going to show you with this battery. Let me show you. Whoops, missed it. Okay, I did it before. See? Just for keeping your hands quick, you know? Try that. Try one quarter. The weight of the quarter is easier to do. You can do it with pennies, dimes, and nickels too, but the weight of the quarter, they fall quicker. So see how quick you are. So anyway, <laughs> that's not my topic, but I thought you'd get a kick out of that. Yeah, I'm that quick, really quick on my feet. Um, unbelievably so. Just saying, I'm, yeah, I'm a little, little, um, yeah, I'm proud of myself. <laughs> I work hard. So anyway, um, my topic today is teaching the younger generation to lower their gaze towards other human beings. And I'm going to tell you the importance of that and the effect it has on little people when you don't do that, especially little people. Just a minute here. You ever been little? and had a adult look at you in a sexual way, and you knew it, but you couldn't prove it. You just knew it was kind of a gross feeling that you get around certain human beings. This is what we need to stop in our society. A lot of people laugh at people like the Muslims that will cover their heads or societies that do cover their faces or their hair, or whatever the case may be, for that reason. Well, maybe they have some of their own reasons that are a little different than what I'm describing. But I think you get what I'm trying to say. Um, mothers should be teaching their daughters instead of, I've heard like, oh, look at this one, or men t teaching their sons, look at that one, or or she's hot or you know what I feel like when I hear that I've always been like this I mean with my friends when I was younger everything and everybody and, and it does bother me maybe you weren't a sensitive child maybe being looked at in a sexual way gives you some sort of pleasure that um I'm not ever going to feel like that. Cheers to that one. Just a second. Especially teenagers, they'd be like so uncontrollable with their hormones and emotions and whatnot. <clears throat> but the parents are the culprits. The parents are the ones Especially in this society, everybody thinks, well, look, but don't touch. No, lower your gaze. Don't even look. I mean, to look at another human being, you know, it's like the cigarette. Hey, cool, you work out. That nice shape you have. Does that have to involve any kind of urges, you know, like people do get carried away with, you know? No. It doesn't. And it's time society really teaches this as a measure towards other human beings. Number one, especially as a man and a leader in this world, you don't have any business whatsoever looking upon a woman like that. None whatsoever. Never. And as women, where's your self-respect? 
really. If you can look at a man and you're thinking about what is between his legs instead of who the person is, I don't consider you a woman. You may be female, and that's a big maybe. So, um, yeah, this probably won't be too popular with people here. But this is something the little people in this world need to learn. It does, as I'm, I'm fully aware, it does take two parents to raise their child to know from a male or a female standpoint the right direction to go. And if we don't have that nurturing as a little child, you will grow up confused and create a lot of troubles for yourself that could have been avoided if we had been taught the right way when we were little. And this is a very true and serious thing, especially in the society that we have now. Uh, nude adults showing themselves to little people, that's a crime. These people need to be put in jail for that. And to me, any society that lets people walk around without their shirts on, and I don't like it, even if I've promoted somebody that I might admire in certain ways, it still goes against my better nature for myself than to really, really approve of it. Um, I. I had a friend that came over. Well, he wasn't really a friend. He was looking for something that he shouldn't have been looking at. Jumps out of his truck, walks up to my house. Now, granted, I lived on a lake, and we all lived in lake country. And, you know, we wore shorts and swimsuits and whatever. Out in our yards and whatever. But I told this person... The next time you come to my house, you put clothes on. You don't jump out of your truck and come up talking to me like there's nothing wrong with that. And I have and I was a very young woman at this time. I must have been maybe 24 years old. So I'm telling you my attitude like this, and he was swearing at me. I said, well, along with your filthy brain goes your filthy mouth and all the filthy conversations that people have out on this planet. <clears throat> I've seen people that like work for the IRS or um, government officials, FBI, different people in my life like uh, so filthy minded. I couldn't even believe they were in uh positions of power and they get alone and then you'd hear who the real person is you know and feel it most most awfully for me is knowing what's in somebody else's mind and you know here's the odd thing I've had so many people that would think in a perverse manner either towards me or in front of me or towards somebody else in front of me. And then because I don't feel that way, I don't even have to say anything. I end up getting penalized or brutalized or whatever the case may be because I don't play in the reindeer games with them like that. I call it mental orgies. I hate that. Oh, it's so disgusting. I'll I'll say something. You know. Like y'all gonna fuck each other tonight or something. Yes, yes, I've said things like that. Because that's how they act. Why shouldn't I say it? They're offending me. What do you think about that? All of what I've just said. Is that important? That somebody like me shouldn't be offended? 
I think I have that right. As a matter of fact, I think I am right. As a matter of fact, I know I'm right. And I need help to um, make this society, this mental orgy of a world, realize the damage they're doing just with their thoughts. It's disgusting. <laughs> right? Isn't it? Or maybe you're okay with it all. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I think I made my point on that one. So besides all that, how's everybody doing today? It's a pretty warm day here, I bet. It's probably about 85 out in the sun right now, and it's about a quarter to one central time USA. So yeah, it's probably going to be a pretty, pretty hot one today, I think. That's what hot truly means. Yeah, it is. Oh, to go on somebody by their looks anyway. <laughs> it's a sad world. I was so disgusted, even as a child, hearing things like that out of my own parents. And when a kid thinks their parents love each other, and then you find out they don't, that it really didn't mean anything. It kind of makes you wonder if they love you, too. Or how their supposed love-making puts you on this planet. They didn't design you, God did, <laughs> you know, when it happens like that. Raise your hand if you actually went before your spouse in the eyes of God and asked for the creation of a child between that marriage. Anybody? else. That's what procreation is from a human. That's God's involvement. Otherwise, it's God's child anyway without your involvement. But if you're involved, you're actually pay playing a part in the future of the world. So. Unfortunately, my son's are at this point what I would consider scummy sluts that I can't stand being around like their sperm donor um, because some people just don't grow out of it it's something that that's so prevalent in our society so acceptable and it's so disgusting and so disturbing that nobody sees the harm that it does to the little people. You know, they might grow out of it. I have prayers inside. I can barely speak anymore. Tears I've cried that I couldn't cry again because the wells run dry, <laughs> you know that deep of feelings about what I'm speaking about. Have you ever cried because your parents weren't all there? I'm serious. Doesn't it cause you sorrow to know people you care about are promoting things that will harm the next generation that already harmed the last one. It bothers me. And you wonder, why doesn't she have friends? <laughs> well, you're finding out, aren't you? That's why. That's the biggest reason why. Oh, yeah. I'm the life of a party. I can be. 
depends on the frame of mind of the other people in the party. You know? But it really is a sad state of affairs. And if you go out and just look at the way people dress, you know, not in the comfort of their homes. This is out in public. You know, it's disturbing. And even the ones that do cover themselves, but uncover themselves in private or in public. That's really disturbing. It is, people. Come on. We got to do better than this for the little people, don't we? Would it bother you at all if you had a little girl or a little boy that started crying because some perv looked at them the wrong way? Do you think it's possible that a child could feel that deep and know that much? And how foolish do you actually look in front of that little one? There's the best question of the day right there. Is there a tiny person out there that is morally outdoing you by leaps and bounds? I bet there is. I would I would pretty much say there is. It's got to be a few. <laughs> you know. Maybe. Yeah, but a lot of people think we're living in uh, ancient biblical times, and uh, those are like the laws that were going on. And it's not a time of judgment, and nobody needs to be held accountable. And <clears throat> don't judge me, lest you be judge. And even the one who threw the rock, or could have threw the rock, didn't throw the rock. Oh, were you there? Okay, keep talking. Yeah. And what was the line in the sand that Christ drew? What was that all about, really? Perhaps they were, uh, judging the only moral person in their presence. And Christ said, this is where you cross the line. Because that's exactly what it was. For those that weren't there or don't know. You know? Hey, have you ever seen my face before? Anywhere? might want to think about that. It's not a mystery to me. I was just wondering if you noticed anything a little bit different about me. I, I know a couple people know for sure, but, you know. I have to speak what's on my mind. That's what I'm here for. And you need to gather what I'm saying and put it out there in your own way. Whether it's with your words or your actions or whatever that may be. But, uh, Teaching little people self-control is the biggest thing in the world that we can ever do, I would say. It's so concerning, so disturbing. First, it starts with the mental stuff that the parents make acceptable for the children. 
then it escalates into the physical stuff that the children experiment by themselves. An example from the adults, and yes, they're emul emulating the adults that are around them, and then they're out on their own, and they're not knowing how to do things the right way. Who's responsible for that? the parents that didn't teach them that when they were younger. And you might have. I'm not I'm not just uh making a pointed video towards everybody that knows better. Because it is not a look but don't touch world. In fact this is getting to be a too touchy feely type of world. Really. Just the gross thought of all the what's in people's heads, you know. Wow. I got this funny thing about me that when I'm with somebody and I'm in a relationship and I'm loyal and I don't look at anybody else like that because that's who I am and I think that's the right way to go in the world and I think that's the right thing to teach in the world and I furthermore I know it's important It is. I got harm from people just in a mentally emotional way. And there's a lot of children out to here in the world. <clears throat> Most of you have, if not been sexually abused, you've been emotionally mishandled in a sexual nature from adults. And it's a major disease. It's a mental disease. It's a mental orgy. There's nobody I know that doesn't know how I feel about this. Not one person. There's um, like friends of mine that live on, well, they lived on a farm, now they're kind of split up and oh, scattered around the area. But people that are my age that knew me when I was like 15 years old, so they can attest to the fact that I have always been really different in a crowded type setting or at a party or wherever, you know. I had a friend that had looked at me wrong and did some wrong things uh, quite some time ago, and he has known me since I was a teenager. And I told him not to come around me. And he was out in the yard with Doug one day, and he pulled up, and he got out of his car walking across the yard. And I said out the window to him, I said, uh, do you got, I said, do you got God in your heart yet? I said, yeah, you better lower your gaze. He lowers his gaze, keeps walking. You know, that's the type of person I am. I confront things, you know. Yes, I'm odd. There's no doubt. But I guess somebody's got to do it. How many of us would still um, probably be with maybe even the first person you ever fell in love with? If they hadn't have been a slut, there's a question for you.
maybe if their parents had taught them right, that wouldn't have happened to them. It doesn't happen when you're when you're with somebody that's um poor to you and then you go and act things out sexually because you feel so relationship deprived. That's just an excuse to do something that you want to do anyway. So there's that. So as a person, who are you and how important is it? If you're with a spouse that's slutty, are you going to say something to them? Are you going to say anything in public to defend the people that they've offended? Or even when you get home or both? Because like this is an example like out of me. You'll never hear the end of it. Especially the person that taught my children the wrong way. One of them. You're never going to hear the end of it out of me. This is my children's souls. You decided not to treat them like my children or your children. Yeah, you know who I'm talking to. And I sense you do watch me. So there you are. And you're there for that reason. Your orgies weren't just mental. You had the f whole fucking insane asylum on your side. Which would be the world at this point. So yes, that's, those are the things that are on my mind, especially with the queer community that nobody shared my question for the queers, which is the ultimate question with all this bullshit going on, because everybody's been taught, oh, if you don't love all the strange things, you're hateful, and girl, the hell up, get a grip on what reality is and help the younger generations stop pacifying these goddamn freaks that are harming other people just for being who they're being out in public. Stop pretending that it's not a real issue. And that's not just the queers. This is the whole thing I'm talking about. Everything that happened before the days of Noah that are similar. There must have been. Well, I guess Noah... Um, What would the word be? Uh, made the cut. You know. It didn't really say that his sons and his daughters and his daughter-in-laws made the cut. It just said to bring them on the boat too. But people wonder how um, the recreation of the Nephilim would have happened because it was destined to be in the bloodline to resurface. So those archangels could be back on this planet and lift humanity out of the sludge that Satan unknowingly created. That was all a part of God's plan for creation anyway. But the helping of the whole situation, that's a real thing. That's what you're here for. If you don't believe that you're going to live after this, then it probably isn't an issue for you. 
but I'm telling you it's one of the biggest issues on our planet is the way people think and how they present themselves to the little people and the impression that they put on them. It's really disturbing. I'll have another cigarette with you and talk to you for a while. I'm going to put my question for the queers up, I think, on my, in my community, like my channel trailer, because it's really important. And the hate needs to go out of society towards everybody, whether we believe in it or not. Nobody has the right to ensue violence between anybody and anybody else for any reason. But if you're acting criminal towards little people, and mothers and fathers and grandparents can't prove that, but we know that because our spidey senses are exquisite. And our, that's our gift from God. Like the, the nature of what is right and wrong. People have lost the sense of what is right and wrong. And the tolerance level towards oddities that are unnatural, that children shouldn't even be around. Nope. For no reason. No reason at all. I don't care if you deem it as art or expression or identity or what you think. What I'm saying is the fact and it's true and it's what will help little people, not the ones that you're protecting for the sake of the agendas and the satanic rule that we're all under right now. I saw a so excellent meme. A young man and him and his wife had lost um, their son. They have a daughter about four or five, somewhere around, maybe a little older now. He wrote yesterday, I'm teaching my daughter how to bring heaven down to earth. I thought, that's freaking incredible. I love that. For a father to be teaching his daughter that, that's remarkable. Wow. <laughs> I'd sure like to hear a lot more younger parents saying something like that. How often do we? Yeah. Never. I've never heard it before. Not somebody teaching their child that. Not even close. <laughs> I think the kind of heaven I brought down to this earth through my children. <coughs> was the uh, end of the satanic reign. And they had a mother that would put them in their place in that respect. And they hate me for it. But they know who I am. And what I taught them will forever stay with them in their souls, whether they like it or not. How about that? And everything you've just heard out of me is the truth of how you should conduct your life, whether you like it or not. So. And that, my friends, is how you raise little people and protect little people. It is a spiritual thing. It's a mental war on them that's being waged and you need to protect them in that area we all do that's why i'm talking about it because it's one of the most important issues out here 
making sure people, little people know that what they're sensing from an adult that is not all put together isn't the way that God meant this world to be. And if there's ever a chance for it to be what he meant it to be, we have to make it that way. You, me, all of us. And leave the sexuality out of the society away from the little people. And little people in schools now being, have a day, uh, why would a, like even a third grader or whatever have to participate in a day where children are coming out of the closet? Doesn't that disturb you? Does me. Oof, Dad's hot here. <laughs> I think it's probably time for a fan or something. Well, that's probably about it. That is what's on my mind today. I would like to see, especially men but women too, teaching their children to lower their gaze and the importance of that. And if they're out attacked in public by people that can't do that, how to protect ourselves against that and to know that it's not all right, it isn't okay. It never is. It never has been. There's been people that have darn near, if not, lost their lives. Like, like you're looking at my daughter like that? Here, I'll jack your shit. Not that that's what I want, because I don't want violence in any way like that. I want people to start teaching their children the godly ways in the world. Because that's the way the world runs. It doesn't run with wicked, chaotic, like misogynistic and, like I say, like an orgy, a mental orgy. It's a, I look around and the whole world is so sexualized, there's no lovemaking left. It's just, it's gross, and to me, it's a gross injustice. It always has been. Anybody that's ever touched me that didn't love me, they were repulsive. <laughs> really. I'm serious, so serious. That's what needs to be taught. Do you agree or don't you? Might want to work on your self-control. Just lower your gaze. It gets easier every time. It didn't have to get easy for me. I grew up doing that on my own because I was a young child. Very disgusted at what I saw. Very disgusted. And like I said, think about that little person out there that is most likely on a higher level than you with their self-control. Just that alone should spur you on to think, wow, there might be a little young lady or a little gentleman out there that's looking at me like I'm trashy. Because they're a level above 
my man Calvin. So you might know a lot of things, but there's something instilled in a tiny person that you don't possess that belongs to God. <clears throat> so, there I've said it. <laughs> I think that's probably about it, everybody. Have a really wonderful night or day, wherever you at. I love y'all. Um, oh, yeah, there was one thing I was going to tell you about, uh, uh, well, I'll wait. I'll wait another day. I, I might even get on here later. I just want to make this very clear that the mental orgies in the world are harming little people. And there's a little person out there that's above you on that note. I'll say have a good night or day wherever you're at. Thank you for joining me.